All right, what's going on guys, Camille here. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to build Sinu or Sinu, I guess, as a main DPS. To be honest, I don't even care about the names anymore, I just quit. I thought it was meant to be like Sinu in Arabic, and I was like, okay, I got this right. But then I guess it turned out he was Greek or something, so it's actually like Sinu. So yeah, I don't know, man. I don't judge me about the names anymore. I'm out of the game. But yeah, without further ado, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and let's begin. All right, so starting off with his roles and talents, um, his roles is just going to be a main DPS, a simple auto attacks main DPS. Now quickly for his talents, um, his auto attacks are just going to be like simple polearm auto attacks, nothing really special about them. Your elemental skill is just like a normal hit too. It's going to deal electro damage and that's it. And then your elemental burst is going to turn your auto attacks into electro damage and it's going to increase your multipliers and increase your elemental mastery by a hundred. It also looks pretty cool. Also his passive talent is that when you're inside of your elemental burst, every 4 seconds an eye is gonna appear on the screen. When that eye appears, you have to use your elemental skill while it's on the screen. And when you do that, your elemental skill is gonna be buffed instead of just like dealing the normal damage. It's gonna deal an increased amount of damage and it's also gonna deal AoE damage. So yeah, you'd wanna use your elemental skill when the eye appears on the screen. So his play style is that you'd wanna get in inside of his elemental burst, auto attack, auto attack, auto attack, depending on what artifact set you have. And and then when the eye appears, you'd want to use your elemental skill. That's basically how you'd want to play Sainu. Alright, so now moving on to his talent priorities. Um, for his talent priorities, your auto attacks damage is going to scale off of your elemental burst. When you're inside of your elemental burst, it's going to have its own multipliers. It's like um, Raiden's elemental burst. So you'd want to prioritize upgrading your elemental burst first. And then you want to upgrade your elemental skill because it's also a very important source of damage. And then your auto attacks are not really that important to upgrade. Keep in mind guys, his elemental burst is a little bit weird. It's like a mix of Raiden Shogun's burst and Zhao's burst. His elemental burst is going to have its own multipliers, so it's not really related to your auto attacks. So in that case, it's like Raiden Shogun's burst. But also his elemental burst hits are going to count as auto attacks damage. They're not going to count as like elemental burst damage like Raiden's burst. They're just going to count as like normal auto attacks like Zhao's burst. So it's kind of a mix. I just wanted to say that so you guys not get like confused. Any buffs or weapons or anything that buffs like elemental burst damage is not really going to benefit Sainu. Alright, so now moving on to his constellations, we're gonna see what's good and what's bad. The description in his constellations is just, I don't know what Hoover is doing, but it's just like too long without any need for it to be that long. But I'm just gonna tell you like straight up what the constellation is gonna give you. So C1, without looking at anything, it's just gonna give you attack speed bonus. 20% attack speed bonus, and that's it. It's gonna increase your attack speed by 20%. I don't know about the effects, the instance, refresh, the federal judgments, I don't know what that is. So yeah, is the attack speed bonus worth it? I would say probably not. Um, even though it's going to increase your attack speed, it's not really going to increase your rotations by much. It depends on what set you're going to be using with Sinu, like the Thunder and Fury or whatever. We're going to talk about that a little more in a little bit. But generally speaking, you're not going to be able to fit in like um, a lot more auto attacks in your rotations. So generally, it's going to result in very little damage increase, maybe like a 5% or something like that. So I would say it's definitely not worth it. Um, is C2 is going to increase your electro damage bonus every time you hit opponents with your auto attacks it's going to increase it by 10 percent with a maximum of five stacks that means it has a maximum of a 50 percent electro damage bonus increase that's pretty good even though you might not have the full 50 percent all of the time with it depends on like the rotation and stuff like that but it's still a good constellation so yeah i would say c2 is worth it c3 is going to increase the level of your elemental burst i mean it's cool it's going to increase your auto attacks multipliers which is obviously pretty good but i wouldn't really say it's worth it. C4, the same thing. It's a very long um, description, but it's basically just going to give you energy. Not energy for Sainu himself, but it's going to give energy to your other party members. So it's going to turn him to a battery. But in total, it's going to give you like 15 energy maximum. So I wouldn't really say it's that big of a deal. It might be good if you want to play him in like a energy hungry team with like um, Yaimiko, for example, or someone like that. But generally speaking, it's not really worth it. C5 is going to increase the level of your elemental skill. That's also pretty good. You're going to be using your 
elemental skill like every once in a while but i wouldn't say it's really worth it for c5 damage increase is not really gonna be that big so i would say c5 is also a skip okay now c6 i really don't know what hoyovers are on about with that description but basically yeah it's that every time you use an auto attack it's gonna deal one extra hit that's gonna be 50 percent of your attack that's it pretty simple i don't know why they made the description that long but yeah every single auto attacks you're gonna have like one extra hit that's gonna deal 50 percent of your attack is damage so that's gonna result in more damage obviously these more hits are obviously gonna give you more damage depending on the set it really varies how much but generally speaking it's gonna be like a noticeable damage increase it's also gonna give you more aggravates which is also more damage it's nothing really crazy though it's not like a c6 that's gonna change him like completely or something like that it's just a decent damage increase which is expected from a c6 i would say it's just an average c6 if you like c new then go for it if you don't then it's definitely not necessary so first constellations i would say you should stay at c0 it's pretty good there's not much really that changes from like c0 to c6 if you want to invest in him a little bit maybe go c2 and that's about it obviously if you like him go c6 i guess but it's definitely not worth it all right so now moving on his weapons so obviously his best in slot is going to be the staff of scarlet sands it's going to be able to convert his elemental mastery to attack and he needs elemental mastery also your burst is going to give you extra elemental mastery which is pretty good so yeah synergize is pretty well with him and obviously it's going to be the best in slot um next after it they're going to come in the jade spear and the staff of homa the jade spear is going to be the next best weapon and the staff of homa is also going to be pretty good there's not really a big difference between them and his signature weapon they're definitely very good weapons weapons on him too next you're gonna have the rest of the five stars so you have the calamity queller the skyward and the vortex all of these are gonna be viable options on him too they're not really as good as the other weapons but they're definitely viable the high base attack and the generally good passives are gonna be good stat sticks on him and they're generally gonna result in more damage than other four star weapons so yeah if you have one of those i would recommend using it on sinu now for the four star weapons you can use the deathmatch or the blacklift obviously these are always gonna be good for the crit the deathmatch is the better option for Sinu himself but if you need crit damage then the black cliff is also going to be pretty good i would say these are the only four star weapons you'd want to consider the only reason is that they're going to give you crit so they're going to help build your Sinu, and they are the only four star pole arms that's going to give you crit so other than that if you want to go for any other weapon other than the deathmatch or the black cliff i would recommend just going for the white tassel the white tassel at refinements 5 is just going to outperform any other weapon so there's really no point in looking at any other four star weapons um other other options might work like the Kitten Cross Spear I guess or the Wave Breakers or something like that but they're gonna be outperformed by a 3 star weapon. The White Tassel is still gonna be pretty good on Sinu and it's gonna perform very well. And I think most people are gonna have the R5 White Tassel so just use it on Sinu if you don't have any other weapons. And it's actually a decent weapon on Sinu though, it's not like Copium or anything like that. It's actually a good weapon. It's going to outperform most of the four star weapons. So yeah, I would say that's it for his weapons really. If you have any of the above, use them. If you don't, just use the white tassel. All right, so now moving on his artifact sets. I did a video where I explained his artifact sets in details. So if you want to check it out, you can. But right now, I'm just going to give you the conclusion that you're going to need. So the best set for Sinu for damage is going to be the 4 piece Thundering Fury. This is his best damage set. There's not really any doubt about that. You're going to be able to do like the rotation. It's going to decrease your elemental skills damage. So you're going to be able to use your elemental skill twice. You'd want to like auto attack two or three times. And then you'd want to use your elemental skill auto attack two or three times. And then use your elemental skill when you have like the eye buff so you're going to be able to use like one buffed and one non-buffed elemental skill every rotation and that's going to result in more damage than any other set now the problem with this is that it's kind of hard to pull off you're going to need to be focused you know if you miss like one auto attack and you don't have your elemental skill ready then it's going to ruin your rotation and it's going to be less damage than any other set so you'd want to make sure you have your rotation correct but if you don't want to like play him like that and you don't want to be like always focused playing him and like make sure you don't miss any auto attacks and stuff like that you just want to play him like casually just auto attack without thinking too much in that case you can use the four piece skill of dreams it's gonna be a very good set on him too it's probably the next best set um you can use something like the four piece gladiators it's also gonna work it's gonna increase your auto attack damage which is pretty good the four piece thunder suitors is also gonna work too they're gonna deal less damage than the four piece thunder and fury but all of them are gonna be good my personal opinion i would say just farm the four piece skill of dreams if you don't already like have a ready 
set. If you already have like a good four piece gladiators, then just use it on Sainu. If you don't and you want to farm for him, then just farm the four piece Gilded Dreams and then use the bad artifacts on the artifacts box. They're going to give you Thunder and Fury pieces and technically you're going to be able to farm both sets at a time. And the domain for the Gilded Dreams is also much better than the Thunder and Fury. So yeah, that's it for his artifacts. If you want to maximize him 100%, go for the four piece Thunder and Fury. If you don't really care about a small damage difference, then go for the four piece Gilded Dreams or any other set. Now moving on his artifact stats. So for his main stats, he'd want elemental mastery or attack percent on your sands, electro damage bonus to your goblet, then crit rate or crit damage on your circlet. For the sands, it's usually better to go elemental mastery. In most cases, elemental mastery is going to be better than attack. Not by a big difference, but it's going to be better. But it really depends. Um, I would say just go for whatever has the better substats. If you have his signature weapon, then elemental mastery is definitely going to be the better option. Um, if you have like a elemental mastery buffer on your team like sucrose for example then i'll guess attack is gonna be better you know it, it depends but they're generally close elemental mastery is generally the better option attack is gonna be viable too i would say just go for whatever have the better substats for the substats um you don't want to focus on getting crit rate and crit damage you don't want to get attack you don't want to get elemental mastery and you'd also want to get some energy recharge there's a lot of things you'd want to get but it's that's it that's usually the thing for most main dps's for the final stats you'd want to have on sinu obviously you'd want to have like 50 to 70 percent crit rate maybe a little more if you're using a crit weapon you'd want to have 100 to 140 maybe more if you can crit damage just make sure you keep the one to two ratio and for energy recharge you want to have around like 120 to 140 his burst is gonna cost a lot of energy so you definitely want to use a battery with him and when you're using a battery 130 like 120 40 is gonna be enough you just have a couple of sub stats and that's it all right, so now finally moving on to his team comps. So generally what you're going to need on a Sainu team is that you're going to need another Electro, as I said before, because you're going to need a battery. Also, the Electro resonance is pretty good. So generally you'd want to use another Electro with Sainu. Also, especially if you're using the 4-piece Thunder and Fury, you'd want to use a Shielder for interruption. Um, If you're not using a Shielder, a lot of times you're going to be hit and knocked back and stuff like that. And you might not be able to have like a full rotation. As I said, especially if you're using something like the 4-piece Thunder and Fury, which is very sensitive so using the shielder is generally pretty good on Sainu. other than that he doesn't really require much um you can build a lot of teams with him he's just an electro main dps so a lot of teams that you can already think of are gonna work on him um some of the obvious ones we're gonna have an aggravate team so we're gonna have like Sainu, another electro like fischl or beidou for example and then the dendro mc and then let's say jean lee as a shielder or like sufros or kazuha or whatever that's just gonna be an aggravate team for Sainu. he's gonna be dealing aggravate and you're gonna be dealing in his own damage another team example is going to be an obvious one which is a taser team too so you can use like sinu with a double hydro or only one hydro if you want to so an example we can go like sinu shing show then yellen and then like another support like sucrose kazuha jean lee or whatever or you can use like double electro like sinu and beidou and then shing show and then a support but yeah it's very flexible on the teams i'm sure we're gonna find out more teams as he like comes out and we test him but generally these are like the basic teams for Sainu. So yeah, I think we're done, guys. Um, that was the video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and yeah, see y'all in the next video. Peace.